sometimes I get things right and sometimes I don't. And one of the things that I have not gotten right is the prediction that I would have snow already at my property. Well, I did get snow as you saw in my last video, but that was just a dusting and it was basically gone the same day. So this year I'm doing things a little bit differently. I'm, uh, let's just say I've learned some lessons and so I'm going to work smarter, not harder this year. And one of the very first lessons that I wanna talk about that I learned is how to protect the weather at my property because weather stations in Alaska are becoming more and more prevalent. But when I first arrived here in Alaska, there wasn't really any good way for me to get an accurate reading of what the weather was gonna be on a day-to-day -day basis around my property. It predicted that the weather station for my property was one to two hours away from where I'm located or further. And so that's not exactly giving me a great um, vision into what to expect considering there might be mountain passes to go over or just the sheer distance between the two locations of the weather station and where I'm actually located. On a recent live stream that I was watching with Rob and Sarah over at the Cremudge Inn, Rob had mentioned- There's no snow on the ground tonight, but let me look. I believe we are still forecast for a light snow tomorrow. Let's see. We probably won't see anything heavy. Let me look here real quick. Until closer to November, I'm seeing a lot of um, sleet mixed, uh, rain mixed with snow, stuff like that, all the way into around the 12th of November. And at that point, we're supposed to get about an inch, inch and a half. But our temperature is staying kind of warm, which is kind of nice. Actually, alone, I, I don't use Weather Channel. I use AccuWeather from my area because it's the only one that actually gives me the weather report for Chase. And it gives me a 40 day, 45 day outlook. And so far, it's been pretty decent on how it is. If I'm using the app on my phone, I only get a 10 day forecast, and rarely is it accurate. But he's saying this AccuWeather will give you 30 days, I believe. And based upon that app, I'm not expected to get snow until Halloween. And as you can see by the view behind me, I don't have any snow here currently. But today, I decided that I am going to put up a snow pole. This pole is going to measure how deep of a snowfall I got when the snow does finally arrive. And I'll keep track of it throughout the winter and it give myself the true accumulation of snowfall over the course of this winter. Now I say true, but there will be some factors that are going to um, play with those numbers. And one is the melt. If there's any melting over the course of the winter months, um, then that will of course change those numbers on the, the gauge. But I can tell from what it was the day prior to what it was the next morning when the snow fell and then also if there is any rain in there rain will also cause the snow to compact or reduce in number so i'll just have to keep an eye on it but not only am i keeping track of how much snowfall i get on my property but so is rob and sarah over the Kermudge Inn, adam and phyllis over at alaska cut the cord and others here in alaska um, and we're going to see who happened to get the most snow on their property this year now i was told by some people in the surrounding communities that for this area the last two years had an average snowfall of about 112 inches this snow pole that i put up only goes up to 70 inches so of course that's twice as tall as this but i know that i'm not going to have that much snow on the ground at any one given time because in the years past it's only been about maybe three to four feet deep of me standing in it. Um, so that means there's at least a foot or so under my foot uh, from where my weight compresses it. But we'll see how much snow I actually end up getting by using this. And speaking of lessons learned, I learned my lesson last Christmas when I ran out of oil in my oil tank and allowed the cabin to freeze overnight. So I'm not gonna do that this year. So let's head inside and I'll show you some of the things that I'm gonna do to prevent freezing this winter.
So each year that I've been in the cabin, this will be my third winter. I have put up insulation in the windows, but last year I was really late and I apologize for the squeaking of the rag behind. You can see how filthy my windows actually are. Um, what I was saying though is last year I was really late in getting the insulation put up into the windows. And because of that, it led to a series of unfortunate events. Poor, let me snick it. I'm not, uh, yeah, don't sue me for using your title <laughs> in my video, but um, it has been a series of unfortunate events last winter that led to the temperatures inside the cabin dropping down to about 20 degrees overnight. And the first thing that was part of that was not insulating the windows. So right now I'm going to go ahead and clean these windows and then I'll talk to you about what I learned about insulating the windows, what worked and what hasn't worked. Now is definitely the time when I should be insulating these windows. The first year I was here, I did it about this time of the year, so mid-October. But last year, for whatever reason, I waited. I just held off and didn't want to get the insulation put up. And I'll explain why later. But for now, I want to talk about what lessons did I learn from not doing so. Because my failure to act on getting these windows insulated led to this snowball effect until my cabin froze over Christmas weekend. And when I say froze, I mean froze. Uh, it was 20 degrees in here and anything that had any moisture content in it whatsoever was frozen, which was not good. I did light a fire the night before the freeze happened, but I had run out of oil in my oil tank. And the reason that happened was because I didn't have a fill gauge on it. So I didn't know how much oil was actually in there. I assumed that I had about 150 gallons of oil in there. And the year prior, I had been burning through about 50 gallons a month in oil usage. Well, I obviously didn't have as much as I thought, or I was also burning more than I had the year prior because I also had a new roof put on my cabin. The new roof is a metal roof and it's not as insulating as the old foam roof was. While the foam roof was leaking and about to collapse in, it at least uh, held on to the snow and so the snow would build up and build up on there, which would then uh, act as another layer of insulation. The new roof doesn't have any snow breaks and as I mentioned, because it's metal, everything just slides off. Therefore, it doesn't have the same insulating factor as the old roof did. So not having a fill gauge in my oil tank and not getting it filled was one of the lessons I need to learn. So fill gauge in, oil tank filled, getting it topped off frequently filled. Oh, and that's one other lesson I learned was you need to be able to not only have the oil guys get to your property and fill your tank, but they need to be able to turn around and get off of your property as well, which last year they were refusing to do because of the way uh, my yard was set up at that time. I didn't have a way for them to effectively turn around on the property. That's been remedied as well. So insulate your windows early. These are my lessons to myself, right? I insulate my windows early. I got a fill gauge on my tank. I got the yard situation uh, remedied. I got the oil tank filled. I'm getting it topped off regularly. A keep fill program as it's called. All of those are good lessons to have. Um, but one of the other lessons, sorry, my brain just went, ah. uh, one of the other lessons that I learned was that when I first got here and I was insulating my windows, I was using rigid foam to do it. So you can see it's two inches thick, one side of it's silver. I put this up in the window, but then what was happening was it was allowing condensation to build up between the glass and the insulation itself that would freeze. And then as it would melt, it would roll down into the window sills. I was so afraid that that was going to cause some rotten deterioration in these window sills. Um, so I was almost to the point of not continuing on with that process until some viewers suggested that I go ahead and um, use some bubble wrap in the windows. And as you can see here, all I did was lightly mist the window and then I just put the bubble wrap up in the window and it just simply clings to the glass and then this will stay in place. This bubble wrap creates um, a little bit of a greenhouse effect in the window and prevents that condensation from occurring. So I'm not getting any condensation between the bubble wrap and the glass itself, and therefore no moisture is going down into the windowsill. 
So that's another lesson learned was make sure that you use the bubble wrap if you're going to insulate your windows the way I am. When I first got here and I was talking to people in the community and they were telling me that I need to insulate my windows, I think they were telling me to use fiberglass insulation that's wrapped in plastic, like it comes that way from the manufacturer. I don't know that that's exactly what they meant and I can't imagine how you would secure that up in your window. So that's why I bought these sheets of rigid foam. Sorry, this one's off camera. Uh, but that's why I bought these sheets of rigid foam and these are quite costly. So um, this year I have another window that I need to insulate because I had a new window put in last year and I didn't wanna go buy another sheet of this. So I'll show you what I did up there. Since this window didn't exist when I first started insulating the windows here at the cabin, I had to do something different on this window. Last year, all I did was line it with the bubble wrap. And I don't know that that did a whole lot of good, but this year what I did is put the same bubble wrap up in the window. And then I took sheets of plywood and stapled some Reflectix to that. I put that up against the bubble wrap and then close the curtain. I did that about a week, week and a half ago, and it's made a huge difference in that window alone. Um, I think that window, even though it's the newest window, I think it's letting a lot of cold in. Um, it should be double or triple pane, should be, but I don't recall. <laughs> Most of the sheets of insulation that I put up in the windows, I actually cut to size. This one was the only one I didn't, and part of the reason was was because I was just done cutting the insulation. It is not that easy to do. I didn't have the proper tool to cut it with at the time. But as you can see, there's this opening here, and this explains that little foam square I was holding up. This is a peephole, because once these go up into the window, they're not that easy to take out, especially when you have drapery or curtains up. So cutting that peephole in allowed me to take a glance out the window if I needed to. Now I have security cameras up so I can see all around my, my cabin. So this is not as necessary. Oh, and now that I have the bubble wrap up in there, I'd have to pull the bubble wrap out to see anyhow. So if you're gonna do the bubble wrap, peephole is not necessarily necessary. <laughs> but once I get these up, it's going to be incredibly dark in the cabin. And that brings me to my next lesson. With that last piece of insulation going up into the window, this cabin went from having some light because it's middle of the day to being as dark as if it was the middle of the night, especially with the lights off. And even with these lights on, you can see that there's not a whole lot of light inside the cabin. On the main floor, this is all the lighting there is other than a light in the pantry. But in the living room, just over my shoulder here, there's no light. You can see it's incredibly dark in there. And because of the fact that there's no light in that room, that's what led me to fall off of the stairs when I first moved into the cabin, was I put the insulation up in the windows and I had lights on in this room and thought that there was enough light for me to be able to see those steps coming down and there wasn't. By the time I got to the bottom of the steps, I couldn't see where I was stepping and I wound up missing the bottom two steps. I actually fell off those stairs twice. The first time I put my leg through where one of the treads is broken in half, the next time I missed those bottom two steps altogether. And I wound up doing some pretty serious damage to myself in that fall. So lesson learned, use a headlamp or put in adequate lighting so that you can get around your cabin safely and do things safely. But nonetheless, this is, like I said, the lighting that I have in this room. And you probably cannot really see me right now. So let me remedy this. Brighter? <laughs> yes. I'm still in the shadow, but that's because the light's behind me. But I had to replace the bulbs in the chandelier. When I put the chandelier up, I put these type of bulbs in, which I don't know if you can see that. This is a bulb that would be meant for a little candle uh, stick that you would put in the windowsill, not really for a chandelier. So I wound up replacing them with some 60 watt, 5,000, I think it's Kelvins is what the K stands for, LED bulbs. But these 
look like 1970s Christmas bulbs, those giant Christmas bulbs. They're horrible to look at. They don't put off as beautiful of a light as the other uh, bulbs did, but I'll be putting some shades up there so it'll draw the light down where I need it and still allow this room to be flooded with light um, and be easier on the eyes because right now looking at that chandelier is really, really harsh on the eyes but it does make the room brighter and that's what I needed. Because like I said, without having adequate lighting, that's what caused me to fall down those stairs when I first moved in. So that was a hard lesson to learn. Putting these little decorative bulbs in because aesthetics is everything to me at some times, which is probably not really practical, um, means I wasn't able to really have adequate lighting in here. It was fine during the summer months because I had the windows open and had natural light coming in. But now that the insulation is up and I don't, it was time to replace. So now I got some shades on order so that I can not be blinded by the light. Well, that light has made a huge difference in this room. It is really bright in here, which is good. I might not even have to use studio lights uh, to do my filming. That'd be nice. And I'm glad those lights showed up when they did because I actually need some additional light in here because I'm about ready to build something. I'll show that in just one moment. But before I do, I want to talk about the firewood. So I had mentioned that my firewood dealer had admitted that the wood that I got was last year's cut and that there was a whole lot of rain in the area where he works from. And so all that wood had you know, probably absorbed a lot of that moisture. Well, these two pieces here, I showed in a video a couple of weeks back and I showed how much moisture content they had. It was around 26% at that time. And now if I put the moisture meter in them, it's relatively low. It's well under 15%, which is good. Um, and that means that without a fire even going in the cabinet, because I haven't lit a fire yet this season, um, you know, insulating the windows. Hopefully I can stave off having to use the wood stove for quite a while because like I said, I want to use my oil burner more and give the wood really a chance to dry out. But these pieces have just been sitting in the cabin, uh, like I said, for maybe two, maybe three weeks and they've already dried out. So it looks like maybe there was just surface moisture on this wood when I got it. And if that's the case, that's good. But I am going to uh, build a rack to store my firewood. So let me show you how I plan on doing that uh, because I don't want to store it underneath the countertop just yet. Since I need to uh, finish working on this countertop, which means staining and sealing it, I don't want to have to pull out all that firewood that I typically have been storing underneath it. So instead, I plan on building a rack on the other side of the wood stove. So I plan on making this wood storage rack using these grates that I originally had in the garden to keep Kenai out of the beds to prevent him from digging and laying in the dirt. Now that winter's here and I no longer need them, why not give them a new life? And I am famous for repurposing things. If it has potential to be used as something other than its intended purpose and it makes sense to me and I have a need for it, then why not? That's how I look at it. And I'm not one for spending money on something when I already have something that can do the job. adding a support piece across the back here so that it can't do like it's doing now where it can go in or out but I need to turn this 180 degrees
famous trick. <laughs> when I can't move a piece of furniture, I sit on the floor and I push with my feet, which can be dangerous uh, because, you know, things can topple over. But uh, when I was married, I used to take all the furniture from the main level of the house and put it in the basement and the basement up on the main level while my husband was at work and he could never figure out how I did it. Um, mainly I was flipping furniture over and sliding it down the stairs because the stairs were carpeted. But if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been able to do it. That and pushing with my feet. It's a little wobbly. Hope it's gonna work. Well, that does it. The firewood storage bin, rack, whatever you wanna call it, is finally done. It took a lot longer to do than I was expecting, but I'm pleased with how it turned out. Now, I showed when I was standing it up and trying to move it into place, how wobbly it was. And of course it's weighted down now, so it's not gonna be quite as wobbly, but I added some additional pieces to help give it some more rigidity. So the first thing I did was I added these uprights and then I added in um, a cross member on the very front that is tied into these cross beams at all three levels. Um, oh yeah, and I forgot to hit record, I guess, when I was putting the middle in. So here's a picture of what it looked like when it was empty. This one is actually tied in to the cross beams that are running front to back. And then I ran an additional piece along the very back of the bin up top. And I ran one on the inside between the slats and the grate on the bottom. That has really helped to sturdy this thing up to make it more stable, if you will. The, oh, I'm like looking at something on the floor. My safety glasses are still on the floor. I'm like, what am I seeing? But nonetheless, this is very, very needed in the cabin. As I mentioned previously, I was stacking all the firewood underneath the kitchen counter, and I didn't realize how cumbersome it was to get down there and pull that firewood out or stack it in there and build it up. This is gonna be way more convenient to do. It didn't hardly take me any time to get this thing loaded up, and like I said, this is about a third of a cord of wood in here. And if I haven't said it already, a third of a quarter wood or just over. So one concern that I have about that is that on the very bottom, I did add in just some, or another piece of uh, two by in the very middle here to support the weight of this bottom section. But I didn't do anything on the top section. And after giving it some additional thought, I realized that I need to run another uh, slat across the front and the back, and then some additional cross members. Maybe three is all I need, but I probably wind up doing four across, and hopefully that just gives it a little bit more strength so that it doesn't start to bow and pull those sides in. Um, I think overall it's actually gonna do just fine, but you know, I want this to last. Originally, I was thinking this was probably going to be a temporary thing, but now that it's in, I kind of like it, even though it doesn't really fit the look of the cabin overall. Um, it is really practical in, like I said, it's needed. So it's going to stay. But as I mentioned, this is last year's firewood uh, that I had purchased the year previously, and it was stored out in front of the cabin. What's funny though, and I will wash my hands after showing you this, is that it was full of bird feathers. Um, so yeah, I think the ermine was living or at least uh, dining in this uh, pile of wood. Uh, tons and tons of bird feathers were in there. So I'm going to clean up really well after filming this. I'm really pleased with how this turned out and there is more to be done in this kitchen. Like I said, the kitchen counter is going to be getting worked on here. I'm starting that this week. Um, so I won't show you it until it's all completed and that'll take a few weeks. So um, it will be done this 
season and I will show it to you uh, very, very soon. I have another project uh, regarding refrigeration in my cabin that I'll be bringing you along for and other things that are yet to be done here in the cabin. And I also want to talk about next week's video. So this week I did receive a number of gifts from people and normally I like to include those in the same week that I receive them. But some of the things that I received from people deserve a little bit more attention than I typically give in the gift giving section. And they tie into some other things that I purchased. And so I'll be covering those in next week's video. Speaking of gifts, my mailbox does close on November 1st. So if you have something that you've already shipped out or you're about to ship something out, if you could send me tracking, if you have it available, that way I know to be on the lookout for it. Because if I don't know that something's on its way or I can't get to the post office after November 1st due to the snow, because uh, I don't want to drive. If I don't have to drive, it's, you know, a good distance away. And if I can avoid icy and snowy roads with moose potentially crossing them or oncoming traffic with no center divider or guardrails, I'd like to. So with that being said, if you have tracking for anything that you've sent or you're about to send, uh, please send that to me so I know to be on the lookout for it because I would hate for them to send something back to you. And I do want to say thank you to everybody who has sent in stuff um, from the very beginning to now and everybody who supports this channel from my channel members and Patreons and to those of you watching this video. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and also uh, give it a thumbs up. But I do want to let everybody know too that I have some links in my video description of the people that I mentioned in today's video. Oh, and speaking of who was in today's video, there was a guest appearance. Did you catch it? If not, you might want to go back and figure out who it was that was in my video. So uh, not only was there a guest appearance in this video and the links for those people that I mentioned are in the description of my video, but I have some links at the end of my video too, not only to some videos that might be mentioned in this video, but also some other individuals and their organizations or their businesses that I support on my channel and their links, if you're interested, are also in the description of my video. So enough rambling. I'll let you get back to your day, but I do have some funny outtakes for you if you want to stick around and see those. There were quite a few in this video, as you can imagine, from all the time it took to build this. Otherwise, I will see you here next week, if not sooner. Take care and stay safe as always. Enjoy these outtakes. And so I wound up just cutting a peephole in the foam and then I can just pull this out and I can look outside and see if I see anything. But, um, don't like messing up, but I do it a lot. A lot, I tell you. I know, I know. Nobody cares. I care. The silver side actually looks like is the silver side. I did it wrong. Did it wrong. Yeah, I should do it like this. Either how. Anyhow, you're going to keep your cabin or your home, if you live in a very cold area like I do, you're going to, oh my God, I just keep freezing. Not freezing, but my brain is shutting off and that's really, really stupid. I have just gone ahead and laid down the under, yeah, whatever this piece is called. Um, framing is not my specialty. Uh, sorry, Grandpa. So I had one grandfather that was uh, in construction by trade and another one was a plumber. And both of them are probably rolling in their graves right now. One for my lack of terminology, the other one because I ripped out all the plumbing in my house. <laughs> so, sorry, Grandpa's. So it's taken me a moment to figure out how
supposed to happen? Oh, yeah, yay. This is why we leave stuff alone. Like a moron. The mother that I am, that I am.